This is One on One. I'm going to introduce you to a guest who's involved in an extremely important fight, um, and he is Brian Lang, director of Supermarket Campaign with the uh, Food Trust. Good to see you, Brian. Morning, Steve. This is a fight, is it not? Absolutely. There's a battle. And uh, there is a dearth, if you will, if you will of supermarkets in urban areas, particularly in the state of New Jersey and places like Newark and Camden and Trenton, um, and the Food Trust dealing with this. What is the Food Trust? Uh, we're a not-for-profit organization based out of Philadelphia. We got started in 1992 out of Reading Terminal Market. And we started out running small farmers markets in the city of Philadelphia because we found that a lot of the low-income communities of the city were without supermarkets or healthy food retailers, and we really wanted to do something about it. And the supermarket campaign is? Uh, the supermarket campaign is an effort uh, we've undertaken for over 10 years now to call attention to the fact that there are fewer supermarkets in low-income communities than, than there are more affluent places in, in a city like Philadelphia. And what we've tried to do is to get uh, the public sector and, and other influential stakeholders to do something about it by providing incentives to supermarkets and healthy food retailers that want to invest in some of those underserved communities. In this report, expanding New Jersey supermarkets, a new day for the Garden State, very important report. By the way, you'll see online throughout the entire segment, uh, the Food Trust website, go on it, get access to this report. It is very important. Uh, it not only talks about the seriousness of the problem, why there are so few supermarkets, why it is so difficult to open supermarkets in urban areas, but also some of the recommendations as to how to move forward and improve that situation and the role of the Robert Wood Johnson Foundation big here, correct? Absolutely. They've invested $12 million in the reinvestment fund to provide financial incentives to bring new and expanded supermarkets to underserved communities. Like I said, places like Camden and Newark. Let's talk about this. What are some of the biggest challenges that you found that are documented in the report, Brian, as to opening supermarkets in places like Newark, Trenton, and Camden? Why so hard? Well, it's a real challenge because building costs in the inner city are just a lot higher than they might be in suburban areas. Uh, you know, there aren't as many parcels of land that are suitable for a, a supermarket development. And to get a parcel of land uh, suitable for a supermarket together. It can take years and you have to cobble together lots of irregular pieces of land. And that's, it's, it's just expensive. It's more expensive than uh, starting a, a similar store out in the suburbs. Also, you know, once a store is ready to open up for business, some of their costs of doing business in the inner city are higher. For example, uh, their insurance costs can be a little higher. Why? And uh, it, it's just more expensive to insure a business in the inner city. And that drives up a supermarket operator's cost of doing business, which makes it more difficult for them to justify the investment in the first place. What so, about labor? What about labor? Uh, labor is comparable. Is it comparable? It's comparable. However, uh, workforce development costs, the cost of training your staff can be more expensive because the uh, skills that uh, potential employees uh, could bring to an urban supermarket are, are not necessarily the same sets of skills that people in other communities would have. Okay. Tough to open up a supermarket, mm -hmm. which, and by the way, let's talk about why it is so important to have. Sure. Before we talk about some of the recommendations to deal with it, this serious problem. Why is it so important? I was born and raised in Newark, mm -hmm. and I know when I go back to my old neighborhood, there is not the same supermarket that was in that neighborhood. It has not been there for yeah. 25 years. In my hometown of Montclair, there are supermarkets all over. Explain to folks who may not understand it, what is the impact when a community does not have a supermarket? Well, when people don't have access to a supermarket, a lot of research has found uh, that they tend to eat fewer fruits and vegetables, and they're, they're less likely to maintain a healthy weight. And that is really important here in our country today. Uh, in 2008, uh, the, the cost of treating obesity in the U.S. was $147 billion. So this is a problem that it's worth getting a handle on, and improving people's access to healthy food is, is one way to do that. Now, in the report that people can get online if they go onto the Food Trust website, it talks about this. What mm -hmm. are some of the specific recommendations that are documented in the report that you found that attempt to deal with? There is no quick fix. There's no, no magic bullet. What are some of the things that, that can improve the situation? Well, for starters, we call on the state of New Jersey to just prioritize supermarket development for sort of the comprehensive 
development of communities. You know, think about having access to healthy food retail when you're when you're revitalizing a city like well, Camden out, or like out, Newark. Time out. What does that mean to for the state of New Jersey to prioritize well, state it means, government? It means uh, it means a number of things. Uh, you know, economic development uh, folks in the state should think about supermarkets as one good use of some of the tools they have available to attract, you know, all sorts of businesses here to the state of New Jersey. Uh, you know, it, it also uh, calls upon not just state government, but, you know, folks at charitable foundations to do what they can to bring supermarkets to communities that don't have them. And, uh, you know, that recommendation that's in the report is part of what resulted in the Robert Wood Johnson Foundation's investment in the reinvestment fund. So it, it's so interesting. People will say, you know, what is government going to do about this? Mm -hmm. It's not going to happen by itself, is it? No. You certainly you'd also need uh, supermarket operators themselves to look at a city like Camden, uh, look at a city like Newark, look at what the state and the Robert Wood Johnson Foundation and others are doing, and say that they really want to make a go at starting a new business in, in a city like Camden or Newark. You know, I'm thinking about this, and I know it's not a recommendation mm -hmm. in the report, at least not one that I saw. But I always think about the media. I always think about the role that we play, particularly in public television, mm -hmm. because that's where my mind goes here. And I'm not going to say full disclosure, because you saw at the beginning of this program that the Robert Wood Johnson Foundation is in part underwriting this programming, the programming that attempts to inform the public about these issues. But I always ask the question, what is the role that we have to play here? And I don't just mean television. Mm -hmm. I'm talking about all the different information platforms out there, including the internet. Is there a role for us? Well, I think in the media, you have an opportunity to be a voice for people in communities who oftentimes don't have uh, perhaps a loud enough voice in the public discourse and, and bring to the attention of everybody some of the challenges they face. Uh, for example, in, in this particular issue with regards to health challenges and how the food available to them in the communities where they live uh, is part of what's mm -hmm. driving some of the health problems those people encounter. So it's really that awareness raising and, and that, uh, you know, focusing both uh, just people's attention, but also, uh, you know, the government's attention on, on this as a, an issue and an important issue. It's one of the reasons, by the, by the way, folks, when you log on to our website and you put it up right there, our website, if you, if you can, our sister program, New Jersey Capital Report, Report, which is our public policy program, we do a lot of programming related to this issue. Go on to that website, see some of those interviews with state legislators and others trying to deal with these related issues, um, including with members of the state legislature responsible for dealing with this. Um, question, final question for you, mm -hmm. Ed, here. The report came out in April of 2012. Correct. Describe the response. Oh, the response has been great. There was uh, a lot of uh, attention the report received in the media, and uh, you know the report was released at an event uh, at the site of this fresh grocer that's getting built in New Brunswick. Uh, speakers at, at the report's release included uh, Lieutenant Governor Kim Godano right? and uh, some senior folks from the Robert Wood Johnson Foundation, uh, the Reinvestment Fund, and people who helped us write the report, the New Jersey Food Marketing Task Force. A uh, couple speakers from Food Circus, Supermarkets, and the Women's Fund of New Jersey. One of the pieces there, when you mentioned Kim Godano, I think about the Economic Development Authority, the New Jersey Economic Development Authority, mm -hmm. who is, uh, they're getting it. In fact, as we do this program, Michelle Brown is taking over there from a long time uh, uh, leader there, Karen Franzini, it's going to be interesting to see the role they play moving forward because they've been very involved in some of these initiatives. They've been very involved in this effort. They were uh, one of the earliest investors in the reinvestment fund and their effort yep. to bring supermarkets to underserved places in New Jersey. Uh, they also uh, gave us a small grant to, to do some of this work as well. So uh, New Jersey's Economic Development Authority has been very supportive of this work. And, you know, without their leadership, uh, you know, I don't know that we'd be on the cusp of announcing such great things as we are right now. We are all in this together and we all need each other. The report is called Expanding New Jersey Supermarkets, a new day for the Garden State. Uh, Brian Lang, director of Supermarket Campaign, the Food Trust, doing important work. And by the way, we, before we get out of here, there's really important work going, going on in Pennsylvania, the state of Pennsylvania, the state of New York. They have made real progress here. The Food Trust has been working there. We are far behind in the state of New Jersey. We have a lot of work to do. Thank you very much, Brian. Right? Thank you very much, Steve. Right. We'll be right back right after this. Stay tuned. Thanks. I just want to make One on One with Steve Adubato has been a production of the Caucus Educational Corporation, celebrating 25 years of broadcast excellence. 
Funding for this edition of One on One with Steve Adubato has been provided by Robert Wood Johnson Foundation, New Jersey Manufacturers Insurance Group, Auto Insurance, Homeowners Insurance, and Banking under the principle of stewardship. PSE&G, committed to improving New Jersey's economy and strengthening its communities. And by the law firm of Gibbons PC. Promotional support provided by NJ Biz, All Business, All New Jersey. And by the New Jersey Business and Industry Association and its monthly magazine, New Jersey Business. Transportation provided by Airbrook Limousine, serving the metropolitan New York, New Jersey area. One on One with Steve Adubato has been produced in partnership with St. Joseph's Healthcare System.